Hello everybody, and how is everybody doing today? Are you well? <laughs> I am so delighted to hear that. And me, you ask? Oh yes, I'm doing very well, top of the world indeed. And today, today is a little overcast, but the weather is stable and it's a great day for flying. So that's what I'm going to do today. So Zach, are you there? Good, because listen up now, because this is your flight. Do you remember a few weeks ago you wrote me and you said that if I have any spare time, perhaps I could do a flight between Gatwick, that's E-G-K-K, -K, and Edinburgh, E-G-P-H. Of course I can do that. Now you also said to try a crosswind landing at Edinburgh. Well, I would be more than happy to do that, but it does depend on the weather today, doesn't it? I'm not sure if it's going to be crosswind or how much, but we will see what happens. But yes, today we are going to go to Edinburgh, which means we're going to have some special in-flight entertainment. Would you like to see a quick sneak preview? Here it is. <laughs> yes, that should keep everybody awake, don't you think? But it's to get everybody ready for good Scottish culture. Edinburgh is, of course, the capital of Scotland, and it is a very important city. Right. Well, how are we going to get there? Well, I'm going to be following EasyJet Flight 807. So if you want to look that up, you put in U2 and 807, and it will come up with the flight. We're very, very fortunate today, too, that I have some very excellent sceneries for this two airports. Gatwick is made by UK2000, and so is Edinburgh, made by UK2000. Both are very excellent and detailed. Beautiful scenery. We'll be starting out at gate 131 at Gatwick. So that's our starting point. So if you're ready, are you ready, Zach? Are you ready? Good. Then let's go into the pre-flight and see what we can find out about the weather, the conditions, and make ourselves a flight plan. Ready? Let's go. Well, here we are on Flight Aware. And we're looking up EasyJet 807. Here you can see the, the codes right below the, the name. This is an older flight that arrived over 21 hours ago, according to this. And it left London Gatwick Gate 55 Foxtrot. We'll be using 131 for our departure. It left two minutes early and arrived 19 minutes early. Well, let's see if we can do something like that. Looked like they had a bit of a tailwind, if that's the case. Here's the important thing for Gatwick. They had a taxi time of 11 minutes. Gatwick is a very busy airport and anything can happen down there. Taxi time in... Edinburgh was four minutes, so that's perfectly fine. And here's the route. Here's the route that they took. And it looks like they left on 
runway 08 and it looks like they came in on runway 24. Well, we'll see whether or not we're going to get the same. And what was their 34,000 feet? Right, well, we'll put the same in for hours as we go in and make our flight plan. Now, windy.com, here is the weather conditions for the airport right below there. And the wind is looking pretty consistent. It says, wind is variable three knots. Visibility 10 kilometers or more, clouds broken at 3,600 feet, temperature 11 degrees, Q&H 1027. Well, we've got high pressure, high pressure down there. But look at this, it's also VFR. So looking at the direction of the weather, I'm going to guess perhaps that we'll be taking off in this direction, which means in all likelihood we'll be on 08 right, because that's the runway that most of the aircraft tend to use is, is the 08 right. Now looking at windy.com for Edinburgh. Here's Edinburgh right here. And the wind is, well, that's blowing in a different direction to what it is down in London. Here, the wind is 240 degrees, nine knots. Visibility is clear though, VFR. Q&H is 1025. There's a few clouds at 1800 feet, so we'll have a little bit of murk to go through, but it should clear up for a nice, clear, clean landing. Whether we get a crosswind or not, I don't know, Zach. Let's have a look. Well, looking at this, it looks like runway 24 will be the one that's in use, but the wind is also blowing that direction so I don't know if we'll get the crosswind landing that you wanted but we'll find out. All right let's make ourselves a flight plan. We are Ryanair 186. We're departing from Gatwick which is EGKK and we're going to Edinburgh which is EGPH. The alternate airport we're being given is Presswick. There's our airframe. Registration number is right there. By the way, you can look that up, Zach. It is a real airplane and it is still flying today. Flight time is one hour and 30 minutes. Departure is on runway eight, right, as we thought. Arrival is on 2-4. I'm going to force in 3-4-0 for the flight level. Passengers are full. Cargo is one ton. So we've got one ton of champagne, caviar and haggis. <laughs> and there, there is our route. And looking here, you can see where we're departing Gatwick, going out, flying up, and then coming in on that direction. And there is Presswick, in case we have any issues and we need to abandon Edinburgh and land somewhere else. All right, we will save this flight and then let's generate the flight plan. And here we are. Here is our information. We do have 340. Airtime is one hour and seven minutes. Block fuel is 6,052 kilograms. And this this is the information that we need for putting into the FMC. Well, there's the, the flight plan and the route. 
down here. This indicates the the flight level that we're going to be flying at. This is our cruising altitude of 340. And this is our route. We're going to need to know the average wind. That's we'll, uh, we'll need to put that into the FMC. There's the cost index. It's six for Ryanair. Here is the block fuel that we'll need to make sure is loaded on, 6,052 kilograms. The reserves, 2,300 even, and the trip and taxi together, 3,113. And here is the whole thing from EGKK, runway 08 right, with the LAM one Zulu departure, going to EGPH, landing on runway 24 using the NPIP one echo arrival. Down here is the descent information that we'll need for flight level 200, flight level 150, and flight level 100. Now, just nipping down to the bottom, let's have a look at the weather, see what the weather is. Ah, it looks like there is definitely some weather activity here. This probably accounts for the difference in the weather direction between the north and the south of Britain. And here's the wind direction for our flight level. Well, it looks like we are going to be bucking headwinds all the way in. Well, that's not particularly brilliant, but it still could mean a crosswind landing if that's what you want to see us do, Zach. So let's find out when we get there. And here is our route starting out here at EGKK. Top of climb over to here, the top of descent going down. Zesto, Totten, and then into EGPH. Right, well, if you're ready, let's go in then and check out Navigraph charts. We need to build that so that we have all of the plates that we need for takeoff and arrival. And here's the United Kingdom. So we'll go flights, new flight from Sembrief, and there it is. Going to click here, open the charts list. I'm going to need airport info. I'm going to need parking stands. I'm going to need the coordinates. Now here is the departure route. So we're going to be departing in this pattern. Oh, and by the way, they do have noise abatement down there. So everything is very strictly controlled for altitude and speed. So I'm going to just pin that. And now there they all are. All four of those plates are at the bottom ready for use. So close that and then go over here to the end. So open the charts list for Edinburgh. I'm going to need the airport. Parking stands would be a good idea. And then here's the arrival. Here's the NP1 Echo arrival. So I'm going to pin that. And since we're coming in on 24, ILS runway 24, and we'll be coming in on the TLA.
So going over here, ILS category three, runway two, four, and put that in. Now, we'll need to make some adjustments when we go in to make our flight plan because obviously we're not going to go up to here and then back down again. So we will probably go from here directly from this point, which is, let's look at the waypoints. We'll go from Eskdo, we'll bypass Tartan and go straight to TLA, which is right here. And then we can join it that way or we can go to Tartan and then just join the TLA and going in that way. We actually have a choice, but we'll work that out when we get into the cockpit. Right, we have our flight plan made. We have all of the charts here on the bottom, so we're ready to go into the cockpit and get ourselves started. Oh, there you are, Zach. Come on in, take your seat, buckle up, and let's get ourselves ready. Now, where are we? We're here at Gatwick Airport. Look at the scenery. Scenery is really detailed. This is UK 2000 scenery. It really is superb. And we've got nice weather for a change. So we may have a nice little run up to Edinburgh. Hmm. Whether we get a crosswind landing up there, of course, is another matter, but we will see. Now I've already been around. I've kicked the tires washed the windows, checked all the connections, made sure all of those red tag things are all been pulled off. So we're all clear and ready now to start the procedures in the cockpit. Are you ready? Then let's begin. All right, adjusting the seat is always the first thing. Then we turn on the battery check that we have some voltage coming out, turn on the fuel pumps, and then we start the APU. Now, the APU is located in the tail of the aircraft. It's a little engine, and it does two things. One, there's a compressor on it when it's needed. That sends heat or air conditioning into the main cabin. And then when we divert it, it goes to the engines, the main engines, to get them to spin, to get them started up. And the other function of the APU is a generator that gives us 115 volts. And that is what we're looking for right now. As soon as this blue light comes on, I'm going to switch then from the batteries of the aircraft to the APU, there it is. And up here, we're now running on 115 volts. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the IRS for the left and the right. We have two GPS devices. And while that is getting aligned, I'm gonna turn on the galley and that allows the microwaves and everything else to be in use. Turn on the emergency exit lights. Now these are those lights that go on down the center of the aisle and over the exits, emergency exits on the fuselage. Turn on the no smoking, fasten the seat belts and then, and then we wait to see if we get any cabin crew to come to us and bring us a cup of tea. Oh well, they never do, they never do. And then up here we'll turn on the left and the right window heats, that's these right here. Now the probe. Usually in airlines, especially big jet airlines like this, they don't turn on the probe heat 
until a little bit later on. But I'm an old propeller pilot and I've always been in the habit of turning on the probes initially. Now I know that there is a risk to the ground crew who may want to grab hold of one of those probes accidentally and of course they would be quite hot. But I'm going to turn them on anyway because they should know that we're in here and we're messing about and they shouldn't be messing about with bits on our aeroplane. Then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm turning on the hydraulic pumps. The forward service hatch is open and the equipment. Now what is that? That's the air stair that's down the side of the aeroplane. It opens up, it's electrical, it drops down and that allows passengers to get on and off. And then over here I'm going to turn on the APU bleed and now this is the compressor and then turn on those and listen There's that rush of air that is now going through the air conditioning or heating system in this case for today into the main cabin. So now that air is blowing out of the nozzles over people's heads. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the steady light and that lets everybody on the ground know to be aware that we are starting the engine procedures and the startup procedures so that they shouldn't be messing about with anything without us knowing about it. So far so good? All right then. Now I've already got the fuel on board so we're already filled up on that and just check quickly across the board. Yeah, we're looking fine. So now it's time to program the FMC. So I go to the position and we are at EGKK and we are at gate 131 according to that 131 stand and it comes up from the database with that information and what we'll do is we will check that now with the coordinates that we have on the official airline charts. Let's see if it matches. So it says 51093, so 51093, and then it says 00106. 00106. So I'm going to click on that. It puts it in the temporary at the bottom and then transfer it right there. Now the GPS is fixed. Now we go to the route. So we're EGKK to start with and we're going to go to EGPH which is Edinburgh. We are Ryanair flights, so we're RYR and we're number 186, so we put that in. Go to the next page. Now we're going to go direct first to LAM, L-A-M, so we're putting, putting in L-A and M. There are several to choose from, but it's usually the top one that we need, so click on that. Then it says we take the Lima 1-0, so Lima 1-0, and that will take us to BPK, BPK. Then we take the Uniform November 601, so Uniform November 601, and then that will take us to NPIP, I-N-P-I-P -I and that is our route so activate execute now we go to the fix and the fix of course is our destination E-G-P-H and we want to have a four mile circle around our destination on the dial and we want to have a ten mile 
radius circle and the 30 mile. Okay, Zach. Now we go to the descent. Transition levels are always determined by the ATC in the UK. So we'll leave that as it is. But we do need to put the wind direction and speed for these three levels. Flight level 200, flight level 150, and flight level 100. The Q&H at our destination is 1014. Pretty much close to standard. And then I'm going to look at the charts to get the information that we need for the wind speed and directions here. So at 200 it is 244. At 35. For flight level 150 it is 250 at 35. And at Flight level 100 or 10,000 feet, that's 252 at 41. This allows then the onboard computer to make a lot of calculations for us. So execute that. Now we go to departures and arrivals, and for this we're going to need to listen in to the ATIS. So the ATIS frequency is 136.52. So 136.52. Airport information, Mike 1159, wind, zero, visibility, calm, greater than 20 miles, sky conditions, temperature, few clouds at 2700, dew point, altimeter, 125. One zero two three landing and departing runway eight right VFR aircraft say direction of flight all aircraft read back hold short instructions advise controller on initial contact you have Mike. Well, we have our information, which is Mike. It tells us that the altimeter is one zero two three, which I've set up here. It also says that the outside temperature is twelve degrees. BFR conditions and that we are taking off from runway 8 right. So I'm going to put 8 right in there and we'll be using the the Lam 1 Zulu departure. That's the one. Execute that. Go back to departure and arrival and go to the arrival section. We're proposing to come in on ILS to one we'll be using the mp1 echo arrival and we'll be using the tla transition so execute that go to the legs now i'm going to switch to the plan on the epis here so that it changes this screen and now i'm going to go through the steps to look for discontinuity and looking good so far. You can see there's a lot of waypoints that have been put in automatically by that flight plan that we inserted. So far, so good. Still going through, ah, here we go. Now, Estio and there's Tartan. So if we decide to go to Tartan, then we can switch and then simply go directly to the DO28X. So we'll put that up there, execute that. So that actually takes a few miles off our route and then swings us all the way around for a perfectly lined up approach to runway 24 in Edinburgh. All right, switch back to map. Press the weather, terrain over there. Click this for the data, for data there. And then we'll turn on the TCAS 
so that we'll be able to see any traffic that is coming too close to us so that we can make an avoidance. This point will also switch on to the RTO in preparation. Okay, so far so good. Now we'll need to go into route and perform the initialization. The plan is we have reserves of 2,505. The trip and taxi plan is 3,067. So that's 5,572 kilograms that we're likely to use on this trip. And that is close to 5.6. So we'll put 5.6 in up there. That's what the plan is. And the reserves are 2.5. Then all I have to do is double click the zero fuel weight and then it does the calculations. Six for that. We are at 340 for our flight. The average wind aloft is 250 at 23. So 250 at 23. Transition altitude 6,000 feet is standard for all of the UK, so we'll execute that. And N1 limit, we will take the 11 degrees and put that in there and it becomes bold. Takeoff, we'll use flaps 5. Double click this, it gives us the center of gravity and what we should put on the trim wheel for takeoff. Then press 1, 2, and 3, and that will give us then the V1, the rotate speed, and the V2 takeoff. All right, now we have to put that information in. So first of all, over here, I'm going to put in the cruising altitude of 34,000 feet. The landing altitude I'm setting at 150 because the elevation of Edinburgh is 136 feet so it's closer to 150 that way when we open the doors of a pressurized aircraft the passengers ears won't pop so we've got that in then over here because we're departing on runway 8 right we'll need to put in 78 degrees because that will be the heading as we depart. So 78 there. And 78 over here. And here's the one for your side, Zach. I'll, make, I'll do this one for you. 78 degrees on your side. Good. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put in our presumed altitude. Normally this is set by ATC, but we're Ryanair and we do what we want to do. The max speed for V2 is 146, so we'll put 146 in this. Okay. Now let's check this and find out if we've got a good flight plan. So we put on the flight director pilot first, flight director co-pilot second, press the VNAV button, press the LNAV button. If we get green lights, which we do, that means we have a good plan. So now I arm the auto throttle, the VOR1, VOR1 on my side and on your side. Okay, so far, we're looking good. Are you keeping up with all of this, Zach? Good. I'm glad to hear it. All right, now we've got that information in. We'll close up the service hatch and the equipment, so we'll do that, and we'll make sure that the lights go out. That's our confirmation that we are secure. You hear that? That's the electrical, mechanical part that is bringing up the stairs. And once that light has gone off, good. 
Now the cabin is all clear. Cabin door is locked and everything is checked. So we'll have a look at the before start. Let's see. Fuel is all on. Windows are all locked. <laughs> Seatbelt signs there are on. Door lights are out. Uh, we've got that checked. The MCP, B2, the heading, alternate LNAV and all has been done. Takeoff thrust is not assumed. Takeoff speed B1 is corrected. CDU pre-flight is completed. Rudder, air alarm trim is free and zero. Taxi and takeoff briefing. Well, we're going to do that right now. When we reverse, because we need to go down there to get to the active runway, we are going to need to reverse this way and put our nose to the right so that we can go in that direction. And so then we'll put the anti-collision light in on because the next thing we're going to do now is get clearance from the tower to taxi to the active. And we're going to depart to the north. Cashmere ground, Ryanair 186 with November. Request taxi to the active north departure. Ryanair 186 taxi to and hold short of runway 26 left via taxiway. Kilo Papar, Juliet ah. November Alpha, November Alpha. Contact tower on 124.225 when ready. Taxi and hold short runway 26 left via taxiway. Kilo Papar, Juliet November Alpha, November Alpha, Ryanair 186. Well, that is a surprise. They changed the runway for takeoff from 08. Now we're going to go to 26 left. So I've got to make some changes. I've now got to put in 258 on these. Because that's now going to be the heading. I'll do yours too for you. Just give it a spin around to 258 degrees. Well, if the wind has changed, that means it could be variable and we have a crosswind takeoff. Well, we'll have to see. Now I'm going to have to go into the route and I'm going to have to change to go to 26 left and I'm going to have to make a change on here too that we're going to be departing on a different departure and we'll be using the the LAM 6 mic departure so the takeoff speeds and everything has been changed so we're going to have to go back in to route takeoff Flaps 5 still is the same, but we will put in the new value. And, well, that's not bad. It's still, still good. I've now got the new route put in, so we are set on that. So, in this case, we're now going to back up. We're going to turn our nose to the left so that we can go out to the active runway over there. So now we've got that, we need to go to menu, FS actions, and go to push back. We want a standard L, we want our nose to the left, 90 degrees, select the tug. Right, are you ready? Is everything set? In that case then, I'm just activating the, the map so that we can follow our route. There we go. So now, if you're set, we're ready to do our start. Everything else is set, so it looks good. Now, which engine do you want me to start with today? Number one or number two? What's your preference? Catalyst, round, Pacifica, one, two, nine, oh, six, you prefer to go to number one? Well, no, we can do that. Hold short of runway two, six left, using 
All right, in that case then, I have to switch this to generator one. I'm going to turn off the packs left and right and get ready to start on this. So now I'm going to ask the ground crew. Go ahead. Ground crew. Go ahead. We've been cleared for push and start, tail to the right. Copy that, ready for push, tail right. Police burn right, please. Parking brake is off. Brakes released. As soon as we start moving, brakes released, here we go. We'll turn engine number one into the ground start position. Over here, the start valve has opened. And down here, you can see on this dial that it's spinning up. This is the compressor that is spinning those big fans in the engines. And when it gets to 24, there it is. I'm going to introduce fuel to it. And then we're going to listen for the engines to kick in. The EGT is rising very nicely. We're looking for the low oil pressure light to go out, which it just did. And there's the engines. Do you hear them? And now I'm looking for 115 volts. There it is. So I'm now switching to engine number two and starting engine number two. Start valve has opened. It's spinning up. When it gets to 24, I'll introduce the fuel to it as well. And there's the fuel going in. Push back complete. Parking brake, please. Parking brake is set. Brake set. And then again, we're looking for 115 volts to appear up here. All right, Gas temperature is coming up. Watch for the release from guidance on your left. Have a good flight. Thank you. That's the ground crew. So now we can release the ground crew. There's the engine starting. So now we have 115 volts coming from both the left and the right. So we will switch now to main engines for our electricity, turn on the heat again, turn off the APU bleed, and turn off the APU. Alright so far? Good, everything is looking good. Now we'll turn on the runway lights, and everything is still good on here. We'll go to maps 5. The after start generators are on. Probe heat is on. Anti ice doesn't need it. Isolation valve is correct. Engine stop levers are idle. Detent right deck door is closed and locked. So recall. Flight controls checked. Flaps we have green light. Stabilizer trim is correct. Auto brake RTO. Speed brake lever is down and detent. Ground equipment is all clear. Unless, of course, we get the kamikazes coming out from wherever to give us grief. But we should be all right. Okay, we're now ready to do our taxi. So, attendance. Make sure you're secure, we're ready to roll. So give a little boost to get ourselves unstuck. Break off. And here we go. We're gonna go out here, turn right, and go down to the main taxiway to get 
over there to where that plane is just coming in. That's where we're going to go to take off. Look at all the detail. Incredible detail. There are airplanes here from all over. There's British Air. There's Varig. There's another British Air. There's Norwegian Air over there. Thomas Cook is over there. Wow, they're all over the place. Very busy airport, this one. Very busy. So we'll go down here and then we'll turn up the main taxiway. Look at that. Don't you dare. We've got right of way here. Get away from us. By the way, they do that, you know. They try to jump in front of you. It's a cutthroat business. Oh, there's Ryanair over there. Next to a Monarch flight. British Air over on the far end. There's a lot of liveries here from different companies. Now we're going to go out here until we get to as Alpha, we'll swing here. And then we swing over here to the left. And here's Mike. That takes us down to the old short lines. And it looks like we are going to be number one for takeoff. Wow, I like that. So just cross over here. And there we are. Park at the whole short lines. Antwerp Tower, Ryan Air 186, Lydia, runway 26 left, departure to the north. Ryan Air 186, hold short, runway 26 left, traffic is bombardier, CRJ 700 on the runway. Hold short, runway 26 left, Ryan Air 186. Well, we are holding short until that bombardier Ryan has taken off. Taxi into position and hold. We've been given clearance to go into position and hold, so I'm turning on now all the lights, putting the engine start switches on, and turning on the lights onto steady. Make sure it's all clear.
my tourist for a moment turn on the camera and show you how detailed this scenery is look at that look at how detailed the ground is and that's that width that we're just flying over right there and this is active sky and the cloud detail are really superb look at all of that
that I am glad to hear it because we are on our descent now coming into Edinburgh. I already tuned into ATIS. We have the latest ATIS and they tell us that runway 24 is in operation. They also say that there's a bit of a crosswind, so it looks like you are going to get your wish after all. So let's get ourselves buckled in, straightened out. We are at flaps five. We are slowing up a little bit. So we'll see how things go and we'll get our landing clearance next, okay?
the switch, the continuous, and let's do the start switches, continuous, check. Altimeters Q and H is set. Nav aids are set. Cabin is secure, speed brake lever is on. We'll be waiting on the landing gear in just a moment. And there's the glide slope. I've just activated it on your side so you can see us as we intercept the glide slope going in for landing.
500. Approaching minimums. 100. Minimums. 40. Minimums. 30. Uh, 20. 10. And we are landed. Reverse thrusters are on. another detailed airport. This is also by UK 2000. Uh, somebody taking off. British Airways, but we're not picky, are we? There we are, coming straight in. People look like they're waiting. 
team part is down there. And brakes. Alright. Lights are off. Seatbelt signs are off. Your damper is off. And beginning all the shutdown. Right, stairs and doors are open. Alright, all lights are off, everything is looking good. Now, switching off the fuel, off the APU, and off the battery. Shutdown is now complete. Well, Zach, we did your flight, Gatwick to Edinburgh. But that was a very boring departure from Gatwick with all those altitude and speed restrictions my goodness me but they are very strict down there they're very strict indeed so i'm hoping that you like the flight and that we did it all right so i will see you and i'll see everyone else on the next flight of ryanair 186 enjoy edinburgh bye